The old Jackson Bell Model 556 receiver continues to provide some challenges. Aside from the open and shorted power transformer, looking at the IF transformers, the second IF has an open primary. So let me get that out, uh, getting these uh, fasteners uh, removed. And uh, we'll do some troubleshooting here. Hopefully it's nothing but a cold solder joint or something we can easily mitigate. With the IF can removed, we get this one screw off here. And we should be able to pull the uh, IF transformer out. And just take note of the orientation with the open primary side facing uh, this direction. This is our secondary that tests good. Let me fix this one section that's bent down here. I think that's what's keeping the uh, transformer from popping out of the can. Alright, there we have it. I have to get it over here a little closer to me. Here's the primary that's open. And the wires appear to be attached. Let me uh, flow some solder back on these. See if we just got a cold solder joint. All right, with the meter hooked up, let's look at DC resistance. I'm gonna just try to reflow the solder. And no change there. Let me flip this over and I will repeat that process here for the other lead. Okay, no change. Let me unsolder the uh, leads, do a closer inspection of the uh, coil. I'll be right back. I wish we were looking at the open primary, but we're not. I'm actually just measuring the uh, secondary for reference. And uh, what you would typically see, so you can see I'm about 1.271 millihenries and uh, 14 ohms. Again, the inductor itself reading just above uh, one millihenry to resonate with the uh, internal capacitor. I think in this case around 456 uh, kilohertz. And you can see with the coil open itself, the uh, internal trimmer or capacitor is just north of 100 picofarads. All right, I'm going to unsolder the most outer winding and see if I can uh, pull a few turns off and maybe uh, find a break or something. Okay, you can see I've got the solder connection loose there and I'm going to just take my chances here and uh, unwind a couple of windings. I was hoping to find a break right in that area where the wax was disfigured. As you can see, I'm um, kind of past that point. I'm go a few more right down to this one area. Okay, I think I'm uh, about at a point now where I'm past the point where I thought maybe there would be some damage. So uh, let me tin this back one more time and uh, double, triple check, and then I'll decide how to uh, move forward. I took time to desolder the LITS wire from the uh, terminal itself, both sides. Made sure I've got a good solder connection and you can see on the meter I'm still reading open. Alright, I'm going to take the uh, transformer apart and see if I can unwind it completely. Yeah, one thing to take note of is the uh, winding direction. And I just want to make sure I've got the uh, transformer back together correctly if I'm able to uh, find a break when I unwind this. So I've got everything documented here for the most inner winding 
in the most outer winding in what location it attaches back to on the uh, capacitor here. That is for both coils, the uh, open primary and the good secondary. And you can see the uh, winding direction is under and over as such. All right, just for the uh, fun of it, I'm going to go ahead and unwind the defective coil. That being the primary here. Probably took a surge when the uh, transformer went out. Probably all went out at the same time. And if I find a, a break somewhere, I'll bring you guys back and uh, show you where that occurred. If I don't find a break, then uh, I'm going to question my uh, troubleshooting abilities. Okay, I unwound the coil 267 turns, and I didn't find anything, but I'm suspect of this area right here. This is the uh, most inner winding, and uh, you can see the sharp bend at that point, and you can see the meters open. So I'm going to cut this right in this area and uh, recheck and see. I'm just wondering if that's where the uh, break itself is, where it's compromised. That's what I'm guessing occurred. The only thing holding the wire in place at this point would be the nylon coating itself. I may be wrong. Maybe another break somewhere underneath the uh, nylon along the way. Okay, still nothing there, but I see another weak spot right here. So uh, let me repeat the process. I may actually cut uh, five or six inches off and uh, recheck. Again, this is the most inner winding. So I just grabbed a spot maybe about halfway in the winding. And uh, now you can see we have DC resistance. So the uh, bad section is to my uh, left. I'm going to see if I can inspect it a little bit closer. It's starting to all knot up on me. Really doesn't matter at this point because it was definitely uh, open. And uh, looks like it wasn't too far from the end because you can see I'm reading about 11.2 ohms. Assuming the DC resistance of the primary and secondary coil are similar. The coupling between the primary here and the secondary is important. I'm going to go back and uh, use one of my coils that I've already wound and uh, pull a few windings off. I think it measured about 1.6 millihenries and uh, cut the uh, coil former at this location, use some epoxy and place that back on and end up cutting out about a, probably a little over a quarter of an inch and uh, place this back on. See if we can uh, make this uh, work again once we get it back in the circuit. So this will be my uh, cut location which is about 18 millimeters down from the edge of the uh, form are about 22 millimeters from the center of the coil back. My replacement coil it's here. We'll see how well it works again once we get it in the uh, receiver itself. There's my uh, section cut out and of course the uh, bottom that attaches back to the uh, variable capacitor. Let me get some epoxy out and get this uh, glue back. And a couple photos here. You can see the epoxy is uh, setting up on that first section, doing a little rust removal here on the uh, screws that adjust the trimmer for the variable capacitor. Got the can cleaned up, new lead dressing in place, doing some basic inductance testing. The uh, DC resistance, of course, is different due to the winding, but that's no, uh, no harm. And also ensuring that I have the transformer wired back correctly in phase. And you can see I do the primary on the bottom, the secondary on the top in yellow. The uh, frequency itself is not important at this point because we're not uh, loading the uh, transformer correctly. So the stray capacitance is shifting the uh, frequency itself. 
I appreciate you guys uh, watching the series thus far. Hopefully I'll uh, dig through my spare power transformer soon. We can uh, continue the work. Take care.